the crust of our planet began as molten rock. Viewed from space, primordial Earth was a spectacular incandescent ball. And when the glowing outer layer began to solidify, the rock cycle began. A cycle that continues down through time to today, four billion years later. In the beginning, all rocks on Earth were igneous, or fire-formed. Volcanoes generate the most spectacular process that produces new igneous rocks today. Volcanoes deliver rocks to the surface, either in air or underwater, as magma, the molten form of rock. Sometimes, magma fails to make it to the surface. Geologists call these molten masses that cool deep underground intrusive rock to distinguish them from more visible extrusive lava flow. Because they form deep in the earth, it may take millions of years for the material above them to be lifted up and weathered away. But given enough time, intrusive rocks can be uncovered to create prominent landmarks, like Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. or Stone Mountain in Georgia. Or the highest peaks of the Colorado Rockies. Devil's Tower in northwestern Wyoming is a classic example of a volcano that didn't quite make it. Its magma penetrated hundreds of feet upward into the overlaying sandstone and then cooled in place without making it to the surface. As it cooled, long vertical cracks appeared as it contracted. Now, millions of years later, the sandstone has weathered away, leaving behind a spectacular place for close encounters of the third kind. After igneous rocks form and is exposed to weathering effects of wind and rain and heat and cold, Small chips and bits and pieces are broken off and washed down to the sea or river bottoms or lake beds. And given time, thick deposits of sediments, layer upon layer of igneous rock fragments, can be buried and baked and turned into stone again. Rocks formed this way are called sedimentary rocks. Over time, beach sand can be buried under sediments deep underground. Pressure in the heat of the Earth's interior, together with minerals deposited by water, cement the grains together into a rock called sandstone. As it resurfaces, sandstone will weather again and grains will be broken off and transported to another beach. Many of the grains of sand at your favorite beach have been on other beaches in the distant past. Living organisms also contribute their remains to sedimentary rocks. Plants die, and their leaves, stems, and trunks accumulate to form layers of coal. Microorganisms in the ocean die, and their skeletons add to the material at the bottom material that will eventually become the sedimentary rock we call limestone. Sandstone, shell, and limestone are the most common forms of sedimentary rock. Igneous and sedimentary rocks are constantly being recycled. At the surface, they are all weathered away and form new sediments. But if they are buried deeply, even more interesting changes can occur. Heat and pressure and time can cause the atoms in the rock to rearrange themselves into new and denser materials. Graphite will convert to diamond if it is buried 100 miles down. Rocks that have been changed since they first formed are called metamorphic rocks. These rocks tell incredible stories of conditions deep within the Earth. Under the duress of tectonic plate collision, 
layered limestone transforms to marble, while shell turns to slate, and then big crystals of garnet and other high-pressure minerals. And as these materials surface, they begin to weather to form more sediment, and the cycle begins anew. <laughs>